Bergamite. Come aboard to this week's Remakes, Remakes. What, what Were They, they Thinking? thinking? Alright, mateys. This week our theme is Pirates! And we are going to compare the 1950 Disney production of Treasure Island and the 1996 Jim Henson Disney production of Muppets Treasure Island. What's our plot, And The plot is young Jim Hawkins has inherited a treasure map. Ooh. And he is gone to hire a ship and some crew to help find the treasure. On board this ship is this dastardly, sneaky, long John Silver in this swashbuckling adventure. Huzzah! Treasure Island. So both cinematic versions are based on an 1883 action adventure coming of age fictitious tale by Robert Louis Stevenson. Personally for us, we felt the story was problematic by today's standards. It was kind of difficult to wrap our head around the fact that an 11 year old boy took off across the sea with men that he barely knew that seemed a little seedy. So we're getting past that. We're gonna talk about what we thought was fun yes. and what didn't work. We're going to talk about the 1950s version and the characters. I have no idea who any of the characters are in this version. Oh, wait, wait. Jim is the 11 or 12-year-old boy on screen. But other than that, I didn't know who was who. And we remember Long John Silver because he has the peg leg and he talks with a gravelly boy. But the cast is all men. There are no women. So if you were to tell me, hey, Carrie, can you uh, pick out Captain Smollett in a lineup? I'd be like, mm -hmm. And if you have to pause a movie to say like, oh, let me see, is that a pirate or one of the good guys? They all look the same. They all look basic. No. And Jim, where's your mom? Where's your mom? Would she let you go across the sea? I mean, if you were my child, I would say no, but... With all those men? Why? I what, don't know. Why is she in town for so long? They never make it clear. Who knows? Hey, Anne, this is a... Family movie, right? Allegedly. Okay, so why am I seeing a pirate get shot in the head, killed? I remember you saying, wait, did he just get shot in the head? Literally, bullet in the head, blood spurting out, falling backwards dead in a Disney movie. What about the drinking? The rum? I, I don't understand pirates and their consumption of rum. It's not my favorite alcoholic beverage of choice, but it was just too much for a Disney movie. I think we should talk about the Muppets. Oh, please, let's just do that. Okay, so clearly Muppets took a lot of creative liberties with the Stevenson story. What do you think, Anne? The biggest one being a subplot mm -hmm. with Miss Piggy. Now, in order to include Miss Piggy in the story, because she's a must, they made her Benjamina Gunn. And who was that originally? Ben Gunn, who was marooned on the desert island where the treasure ends up being. A former pirate, apparently. Allegedly. So here she is, marooned on the island, and she is a priestess of a tribe of... Wild boars? Oh. I don't know. And, and she had a relationship with this person. She had a relationship, allegedly, with Long John Silver, with Captain Smollett, with another pirate. Like, girl gets around. Because Muppets, what do they usually do in the stories? Well, we always have to include the Kermit and Miss Piggy romance. But in Treasure Island? It just doesn't work. And they sing this song called Love Let Us Hear. But... What led them there? A buried treasure. No. What were they thinking? I would like to talk about my favorite part of the Muppet movie. All right, Anne, what is that? The use of anachronism. Oh, that's a nice $20 word. What does it mean? An anachronism is... According to Webster's Dictionary, a chronological misplacing of persons events, objects, customs, in regard to each other. In other words, the movie is set in 1883. Okay. And we have elements of today. One big example, Gonzo delivers a pizza. What? 
Anachronism. What else? We saw a book entitled Diplomacy. Oh, my God. Anachronism. What else? The biggest one, the rats are on board the ship and they think it's a crew. What? They're wearing tropical shirts and there's Calypso music. What about how the electric mayhem makes a cameo appearance? Electric. Anachronism. And then halfway through the movie, Floyd goes, Hey, man, are we the good guys or the bad guys? And Dr. Teeth is all like, Dude, we just play the gig. We don't get involved in politics. I think it's clear to say that we don't like Treasure Island. Not our jam. Nope. Nope. Overall, I felt that the 1950s, 50s character of Long John Silver, that was my preference over Tim Curry. Really? You didn't like Tim Curry? He's kind of weak. What? I mean, it's got to be hard being upstaged <laughs> by a bunch of Muppets. <laughs> Just like me. Mm-hmm. Now, with Muppets Treasure Island, okay. the subplot, not necessary. Not at all. Not the at use all. of songs, mm-hmm. nine songs, seven too many. But I thought the rats were fun. They were a delight. They were extra, but they were fun. I will say that I actually had a problem with Kermit the Frog in this movie. You did. He was way too mean, cold-hearted. Yeah. Just, he wasn't his friendly, hey, hello, Kermit the Frog here. No, he wasn't. No. So if, and if you had to choose. Muppets are fun. I'm good. Okay, so we're real excited because we actually received a request for our next week's theme. Yes, Kim recommended that we watch the 1939 movie of The Women. So we'll follow that with the musical remake Mm -hmm. of the 1956 picture, The Opposite Sex. And then, of course, we'll have to watch the 2008 remake of The Women, which apparently received a 13% on Rotten Tomatoes. So we have to watch that one as well. Indeed. So folks, until then, as always, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. We love you. And keep watching movies. Until then, see you next week. Bye. Bye.